<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to I Went to Film. My name is Ryan, and today I went to film and saw the brand new illumination picture, Minions Rise of Gru. Minions are a cultural phenomenon that began in 2010 with the picture Despicable Me. Despicable Me was a perfectly fine family animation film, but what seemed to really stand out for most people was the main character's sidekicks, the Minions. Little yellow pill-shaped boys who run around, speak a weird hybrid language of a bunch of romantic and English sentences and do very little that advances the plot, but are cute doing it. There are really two camps for anybody who engages with these minion characters, the minion lovers and the minion haters. Minion lovers tend to post non-self-aware Facebook memes about the way the current generation are failures in comparison to the real strong ones, and the minion haters find them to be corporate propaganda that exists only to sell toys and have no artistic or emotional expression within them. But what's really fascinating about the Minions' property is that they weren't created to have any of this attention for them. Perhaps they were made to sell toys that seems to be implicit in the original usage of the characters. But merely background as something to merchandise off of after the success of the film's main narrative. I'm certain that the people who made the original movie didn't expect the Minions to take off in the way that they did, so culturally dominant. Minions are big, they're a cultural monolith of animation at this point, but they're not big enough to get a sequel right? They're just empty characters with very little to go off of, which really makes Minions Rise of Gru a boring and bland movie. There are some parts of the Minions Rise of Gru that are at least passable. Some of the minor jokes are momentarily funny in the way that only pantomiming little yellow boys can do. I don't love the Minions, I do think that they're a corporatized mascot, but I like the design. It's cute, it's simple, it's easy for kids to draw. Unlike the previous film, which was a bit of an origin story for our Minion characters before they met the main character of the first movie, Gru, this movie follows the Minions on their first kind of big adventure with the Gru himself. The film plays a bit more like a Despicable Me Zero than it does a Minions 2, but this kind of makes sense. It's a little bit hard to go into the future of the Minions characters without necessarily tying it back to the Despicable Me franchise. This is to say that a lot of the comments about Minions 2 are going to be less about the Minion characters. They kind of serve a similar purpose as they did in the original movies, and more about Gru. So just like every other case of Minion shenanigans, the Minion stuff in this movie is generally inoffensive, but the rest of the film is somehow, in an 87 minute long movie, way too long. Very quickly, here are the general plot rundowns. The minions have to become friends with Gru as a general body. Gru is trying to join the vicious six who don't want him to join because he's just a kid and he needs to prove himself. The individual who was kicked out of the vicious six previously wants to re-get the piece of artifact that he stole from China. Gru wants to prove himself to the individual who's been kicked out of the vicious six that he can be a super villain like his hero was villain. Three of the minions need to go save Gru from that supervillain who captured him after being kicked out of the villainous six. One of the minions has lost the artifact that Gru stole that was found in China by the guy who was kicked out of the Vicious Six and now has to go find it on a cross-country trike trip. And finally, Gru needs to find a new father figure in this villain from the Vicious Six who will show him the ranks of supervillainy and lead to future films. This doesn't even mention some of the side points. There's a lengthy, what feels like 20 minutes long piece where the three main minions are learning kung fu that ultimately pays off in a two second gag in the climax. When you're getting into kung fu movie plus a heist plus mad 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 world plus father figure movie, it just becomes an absolute mess. Like a bunch of movies that have come out recently and the cultural trend towards reboots, this movie is also annoyingly callback heavy. When I say it's Despicable Me Zero, I don't only mean that it's talking about Gru as a kid, but it has to show where Gru got his interior design and where he met his mad scientist and where he met his inspirations and how he decided to go get the moon, etc, etc. There was this hilarious moment in my showing when the uh, Gru was at the bank trying to do a heist with this new father figure guy and he goes up to the counter and it's the big guy from Despicable Me 1 and everyone's talking to his friends and going like, oh, I know this guy, I know this guy. And then the guy is like, well, it's Will Arnett. He's like, well, I have a son too. And he pulls up a picture of Vector and this girl in the back goes like, <gasps> like she'd just seen the ending of 
The Sixth Sense. But with regard to that, it did feel like the movie was often taking times to do little points at the original film, which I found to be a bit pandering uh, and a bit boring, especially in a film that was desperately demanding anything more substantive than the empty filler that it generally had. Of course, this gets into a bigger conversation about Illumination as a whole. Illumination just is the lowest common denominator of animation. They don't particularly shoot high for their plots, they don't animate in a way that's special or even interesting, and they don't particularly innovate between films. For years, people criticized DreamWorks for making bad movies, but these were attempts, just failures. The Illumination films are focus group tested, statistically guided, perfectly lowest common denominator films, and Minions 2 feels like another dip even lower. It's a perfectly fun enough time for you to shut off your brain for 87 minutes, get visual stimulation, see some market-tested characters do silly and wacky hijinks, feel a little bit for some of the characters just because of some decent performances, and waste a couple of bucks on an afternoon. It's a bit of a tough position to talk about the movie because I have nothing good to say about it, but at the same time, I really don't have very many bad things to say about it. If you go see it, there are certainly better ways to spend your time, but there are also much, much worse. Coming from a previous review, Lightyear left me with a very, very sour taste in my mouth. On the other hand, Minions 2 left me feeling nothing. I'm the same person I was when I entered the theater as I am coming out. Minions The Rise of Gru is probably a 3 out of 10. Definitely a higher 3 out of 10 than Lightyear, but a 3 out of 10 nonetheless.